feel like when you click with your musical collaborators, it's like falling in love. It's just a feeling like no other. When you sing in harmony with people and your voices blend in this way, it almost becomes addictive because there's this vibration that runs through you that there's no feeling like it. I feel like music for me has always been born out of necessity and it's like necessity to communicate something that can't be otherwise communicated. I started writing when I was a teeny babe, but I think for me writing really came into play when I was in high school. I think that many of us start experiencing our first heartbreak, sort of confusion and existentialism and for me I, I think music was like my only way out of that. When I was a sophomore in college, my brother and I uh, started a band called June and the Bee, but we sort of like haphazardly came together with this sort of singular love of music and the familial connection that we have. It felt like when that band ended, it was like being pushed out of the nest and I had really relied on the sort of collaborative relationship with my brother to write music and I really needed to take that creative process in my own hands and feel more self-confidence in sort of my own process. And so I started playing solo. And then my solo of music ended up evolving into a band which is called Ruby Mac. Being open to that evolution is something that's really exciting. And I also play in an indie rock band called Old Flame. Which was born out of the 2016 elections. And I started it with one of my dear friends from college who is a remarkable guitarist. We were feeling so like deeply saddened and like profoundly angry. We didn't have to reach far. We just dug into like our own upset and tried to turn it into something more productive. To get to the country dreams. Take me to the city of your youth where you thought you found original truth. I mean, I feel like the early stages of Old Flame was like the most aesthetically coherent of a project I've ever been in. We were so like singularly focused on making this thing happen. We started in a place that was more about like the socio-political sphere and less about the personal sphere. Inherently, the personal sphere makes its way in, but it was like a more of a bigger picture. When I felt most connected to myself in that band, I have felt like fiery and unapologetic. I can move my body in any way or sing in any way and it's okay, just fierce.
Ruby Mac, I'd say all of us let this more like comedic side come through and we really love bantering with each other and it's less about like a lead persona and more about like a group dynamic. There's room for a softness and more contemplativeness in that music that feels like you're like peering through the little like peephole on a door, you know, and you're like looking into this like intimate scene. Last spring at the Shea, we were supposed to be playing like an intimate lobby show, but we ended up selling 160 tickets. So we had to quickly move it into the theater. And there was just this buzz from the audience of anticipation. There was this chemistry between us that like, I will never forget that night. It's actually a night that I like really hold on to and try to remind myself of when I'm feeling kind of like in the doldrums before a show. But there is an undeniable like energy that's derived from like a huge group of people versus like your mom and your brother, you know? <laughs> uh, but for me, if I am doing the work, there is no difference because you want to give the same show regardless of who you're playing for. I think it's really exciting to see how like a song or a performance is shaped given the changing environments. Collaboration is a very humbling experience, especially when you're somebody with like a lot of ideas and you always, you just have an idea of like how you want something to sound or feel, you know? But sometimes it feels like too many cooks in the kitchen when you have like a very specific idea of what you want and people aren't agreeing. But on the flip side, it's like through that disagreement that comes like some of the best work that I feel like I've ever made. It's just a big balancing act. And especially when you're doing it with like some of your dearest, closest friends, because like, you also have your friendship and your history in the mix. And it's really hard not to take things personally sometimes. It's like a very personal, intimate reflection of your inner world and your inner life. And when somebody's like, I don't like how that sounds, sometimes you can feel very territorial and protective over it. You found me when my head was hanging low. It's been like a constant act of diligence to remind myself that like my guitar playing is equally as valid as my vocals. I've always described myself as a vocalist and I think that I internalized sort of this idea that I couldn't play the guitar. In all the albums I've recorded, I've always had a studio musician play the guitar. I kind of internalized a little bit of this sort of like sexist bend that happens in the music industry. There's so many like guitar shredding guys and like I'm not a virtuoso and I'm self-taught and there's a beautiful simplicity to that but like I'm not going like you know like I'm not like shredding and like lighting my guitar on fire and like bashing it on the ground. But I think it's like taken some time for me to accept where I'm at and be like yeah people will want to listen to it. This album that I'm going to be releasing is very much like me saying no to those voices and letting my perfectionist mind be at peace and just with the inherent imperfection of the live moment. Fuel pump pumping sorrow across the Mason Dixon line with dreams singing to me like the birds on the telephone line. 
So the album that I'm about to release called Encyclopedia of the Broken Hearted is written primarily in the year of 2017 to 2018. The universe was screaming at me like, you need to be singing and writing. And I found myself drawn out of this like story that I th of what I thought I should be doing into like my, my the path of my heart. This music is very much the landscape of that heart connection and the landscape of just like saying no to societal pressures and following my heart. Take me to your archive, can keep surviving on. And I feel like it's a constant process of reevaluation because it's really funny and kind of ironic to me that like I'm releasing this now and that's the message that this album holds for me because I feel like now two years later, I've made a lot of art and I've seen a lot of the country and I've played on many stages and I feel so grateful for that experience. And I found myself kind of back in this place where I'm like, wait a second, why do I not have enough time for my work? And wow, I had not actually made this connection before, but I think that like, strangely enough, my album is speaking back to me and reminding me like what I'm here to do right now. Encyclopedia the broken hearted No, 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 don't let them catch you with your head down, darling No, 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 encyclopedia the broken hearted Capture my indecision Taxonomic classification of my aching chest I'm a cabinet of curiosity Don't try to understand me, I'm what they left behind This history of forgetting Seems to be letting you down again Down again, down again, down again, down again Oh, you could be impressed but you don't want to be cut Marvelin, 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 marvelin Encyclopedia the broken hearted No, 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 don't let them catch you with your head down, darling No, 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 encyclopedia the broken hearted Take me to your archive can't keep surviving on memory There will be a time for the silver smoke sliding from your cigarette